Hi, this is Casey Hammer. Um, it might say Cassandra on there, but I'm the same person. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my research on Joseph McCarthy. He was a senator um, who was elected in the late 1940s and served kind of through the 50s. Um, and he was known for his um, stance on communism, which was anti, and specifically in his trying to rid the American government and places that were like higher up in society of communist influence. Um, but before all that, he was just a little dude from Wisconsin. Um, he ran originally for a district attorney at one point as a Democrat, and that didn't work out. So then he became a judge because um, he was a lawyer, and so he was admitted to the bar, and he was nonpartisan, and he kind of was a little bit like, mm, with the rules here and there. And then um, eventually he ran for Senate, and he was elected, um, but as a Republican. And when people asked him why, you know, he, a Democrat would turn Republican, he just said, oh, well, that's really good for my image to be a Republican who was a Democrat, meaning I think that he would get more votes. So this guy has always been about um, getting his name out there and getting elected. Um, he even joined the military at one point, and uh, there were a lot of stunts that he pulled there um, to kind of make him look like a bigger deal than he was, and then he eventually like, dropped out so that he could become a senator. Um, but then he would refer all the time back to his time in the army um, to kind of identify with people. So uh, he's kind of a shifty dude. He makes it to Congress, and people there don't like him. Um, not just because he's like the young new guy, but because he's the rude young new guy. And just like it talks about in How Democracies Die, um, norms are very important to the political process, and McCarthy was known for breaking those norms. Um, he would personally attack people. Um, he would give all these false facts and things, and people would spend pages correcting all of this false stuff, and he'd be like, well, that doesn't matter anyway, because, you know, I'm right. So he made a lot of enemies there, and they eventually demoted him, um, and it wasn't looking good for re-election in 1952. And so he was talking to some of his buddies about, you know, how can I get my name back out there because, you know, my actual record of what I've done in Congress sucks, but I'd like to come back. And they told him, um, why don't you consider communist in government? And he's like, that's a great idea. And so um, a little while later, he ends up giving a speech in Wheeling, West Virginia, to a group of Republican ladies um, at, for their Lincoln kind of birthday celebration. Um, and the speech is entitled Enemies from Within, which is what I'm going to be doing my research on. Um, and in this speech, he um, is definitely guilty of demagoguery and uses a lot of the tactics that we've talked about um, that demagogues commonly use in this speech. Um, the funny thing about this speech is when I tried to find the original, but um, when it was recorded, this radio guy was recording, and he accidentally reversed over the speech and deleted it. So there isn't a copy of like when he actually gave the speech, although there are people taking notes. And so um, we've got those, and then we have the speech he gave to the Congress, which are different in a few respects that I'm going to also look at in my research. For instance, um, one of the things that makes him demagogic is his misuse of statistics, which um, it says in demog or demagoguery and democracy is a fallacy. Um, so in his first speech, he said, I have a list of 205 names here of communists who are um, active in our government. Well, in his speech given uh, at Congress, that number changed to 57. Um, he also made some broad claims about, you know, back in the day there were only this many communists and there were this many um, people who were for democracy. Um, and then he said, like, this huge number, like 80 billion communists out there and only 500,000 um, people for democracy exist. Um, but then he, again, switched those numbers when he actually gave um, his speech to Congress so that they were a little bit more normal because the population of the Earth at the time wasn't even 80 billion. So um, he got those wrong. So he... That's one of the things that makes him demagogic is that he uses facts um, 
and statistics however he likes. Um, in his speech, he named uh, like a, a slew of different people who were kind of big names at the time um, who were involved in communism. The interesting thing about most of these people is a lot of them, like one person he um, accuses, um, Alger Hiss, his story actually started like 11 years before he's even giving this speech. And so some of these are old news. And he doesn't really go into detail about what makes them um, guilty of communism. And his facts are usually wrong. Um, and so you can tell he's kind of just using big ticket items that people are going to know about in order to convince them that he's right. Um, another thing that he uses to create um, his his speech and his demagoguery and the need for people to agree with him um, is he uses a lot of apocalyptic language. He um, says at one point that today we are engaged in a final all-out battle between communistic atheism and Christianity. Basically, the apocalypse is now, and if you don't get on board, um, the communists are going to take over and we're all going to die. Um, and so he uses a lot of language like that, very hyperbolic. Um, he also uses phrases like, can anyone be so blind not to believe? And can there be anyone who fails to realize so that you feel like you're the estranged one if you don't agree and go along with his remarks? Um, so he's creating that us versus them binary um, in addition to this kind of scare tactic language. Um, and then he also... Um, a lot of times says like the time is now or you have to act now or, or it will be too late or today this is what it is um, and I think he kind of he draws everyone back to the fact that like they need to act now in order to force them into making that decision um, and going along with you know his idea in this simplified world of you're either communist or you're for America um, and so um, I have a few sources that help me with that. One, a really good source has been this book by Robert Griffith called The Politics of Fear. Um, and it's got a lot of good background leading up to um, when McCarthy arrived on the political scene. It also, um, I mentioned that he uses a bunch of names in there and kind of name drops um, different communists. And this book actually, it's like, actually these people were, it was just like this. They weren't communist, so it kind of dispels some of the myths that he's creating in this speech. Um, I've also, um, obviously I'm going to use demog uh, demagoguery and democracy um, and the fallacies in there. Um, I'd also like to pull in a little bit of how democracies die, because again, he was constantly breaking norms, although I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to pull that in for this specific speech. Um, and then I have some secondary sources. Um, beyond the ones we've used in class. Um, there's one that talks about the Catholic response to McCarthy because he was Catholic and so a lot of these people identified in that way and he does use religion in his speech. Um, and then there's um, some more um, sources about just what the communist feeling was at the time and showing that he's identifying with people's fear of communism to get them to reelect him. Um, I do have a question. I don't know if we're allowed to ask questions in these, but I'm having trouble finding sources of people who um, positively received his speech, you know, like were proponents of his. I think that could be really interesting. So if you guys have ideas on how to look that up, I'd be totally interested. Um, that's basically what I have for you. I don't want to take too much more of your time, but um, yeah, I'm open to comments and critiques, and I wish you the best on the rest of your semester as well. We can do it.